Hi, and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner, where I share five dinner ideas with you, hopefully to give you some inspiration or ideas for this week. Of course, any recipe or videos that I do mention will be in the description, so don't forget to check that out. And let's get started with this week's What's for Dinner. So starting off, we made some birria ramen. Birria, you can make it and use the leftovers and eat it for a few days. But on this day with our leftovers, we made ramen. And all I did was warm up the meat and the broth that I had in the fridge. I brought it up to a boil. And then what I did was I used my leftover toppings and salsa and then we just made a bowl. This is what it looks like when it's all cold. I cooked the ramen noodles. I didn't add any of the seasoning packets that the ramen comes with. All I did was cook the ramen noodles, drain the water, and then as my broth, I'm using the broth of the birria, the consomme. And then I'm adding my toppings. I'm adding onion and cilantro. And then I'm adding a squeeze of lemon juice. And then I also had some salsa that I made. And I'm adding that as well. This is a great way to use up leftovers and to change it up. I've done different things with birria besides just the birria, the birria tacos. I've also made chilaquiles with them and they're really good. But this is another fun way to eat it. You can use your favorite birria recipe or also buy store bought. But if you do need a recipe, I'll put it down in the description. This is what my plate looks like. And this was very good on this day. On this day, we had spaghetti with Caesar salad. Spaghetti is just an easy meal to go with. It's very budget friendly. We have it at least once a month. Um, sometimes even two times because my kids request it. So on this day, I was teaching my oldest how to make it. And it's just one pound of ground beef. And it stretches very far for us. And then I just add seasoned salt. I add fresh minced garlic. I cook it up. So it's pretty easy. And then we just use our favorite jar. Uh, marinara sauce that my girls really like so I add that mix it up and then I like to let it cook on low for about 30 minutes to an hour if I'm in a rush you know and it's quick then but I just like cooking it on low it feels like tastes really good it gives it that flavor of spaghetti the next day as leftovers and this one pound stretches out pretty far so just giving it a mix and it's so easy I feel like as an adult when you're older it's such an easy meal to cook so I'm just teaching her how to make it so that when she's older and she wants to cook something easy spaghetti I feel like it's just a simple dinner and sometimes I don't want to share them because it's just so simple but this is real life so we're sharing it here so adding the lid and then letting it cook on low I cook my pasta and then Caesar salad, just a very simple salad. This was my plate right here. Usually we have garlic bread, but I didn't have any um, on my plate. And then on this day, we had sloppy joes, baked beans, and pasta mac. Another simple dish. So adding a little bit of cooking spray to my pan, cooking that one pound of ground beef. And then I'm just adding my regular seasonings that I do, and then adding the sloppy joe sauce. I think I've mentioned it before. I really want to make this from scratch. I've made it before, but it wasn't like my favorite recipe. So I'm going to try to make it from scratch because I love sloppy joe. I grew up eating it, but my kids aren't a fan of it. So this was just for me and my brother that was here on this day. And then on the side. And my mom's famous homemade pasta muck that's probably my favorite food that she makes. Yes, we added butter and then I add cooked elbow macaroni pasta to my pan and then I add a little bit of pepper and salt and then to that I'm going to mix it up I'm going to add a little bit of tomato sauce to this and why do you call this pasta mac because it it like pasta if you are making pasta and then it's macaroni to pasta mac yeah so this is like a Mexican macaroni cheese it's very good I'm adding some tomato sauce and then I'm going to mix that around. This is my mother-in-law's recipe. She's always made it like this and I think a lot of Mexican moms make it like this. Then I'm going to add cheese. I use whatever cheese I have on hand. I like to add a little bit of cheddar and then a little bit of mozzarella but any cheese that I have on hand I'll add just a little bit. You don't eat that much because it gets very creamy and cheesy and stringy. Like, That's what I like. Yeah. 
that's how it comes it's out. It's so yummy. It's so good. So it's just macaroni and cheese, but Estrella calls this, my youngest, she calls it pasta mac. So that's yeah. the name that it stick to. Mm -hmm. And this is how it's all plated up. I have the sloppy joes, the baked beans. I didn't serve any of the pasta mac because by the time it was my turn to serve, it was all gone. So on this day, we made tortas de carne asada. This is another way to eat carne asada besides tacos. Tortas is very good, very great to take on picnics or out. But here we have this at home. And I start by marinating the meat. Of course, you can buy meat that's already marinated and that's just one step easier. But this meat I had in my freezer and it was not marinated, so I marinated it myself. Sometimes when you buy the carne asada that's not marinated, you'll get it cheaper. So I started by adding seasoned salt. I added some squeeze of lemon juice and also orange juice. You can definitely add more to this. You can add beer to this. You can add fresh cilantro. You can add lemon pepper. There's different seasonings that go really well to marinate the carne asada. So I just did this in a Ziploc bag just to make things easier. I did let this marinate for a few hours, so it's really going to depend how much time you have if you are marinating your carne asada. Anywhere between 20 minutes to a couple of hours, even overnight, would be really good. I marinate this for about three hours, and then I'm just massaging it to make sure it gets really well incorporated. I usually make this in a container and do layers but this time I was just wanted to do in a ziplock. So here we're going to start by making our tortas, the bread part. They're called virotes or bolillos. They have different names but pretty much we're just making like a Mexican sub bread for our tortas and I'm going to start by adding um, warm water. I'm going to add some honey and then I'm using instant yeast. It's just easier for me because with the instant yeast I don't have to wait for the yeast to activate to bloom I can just add my flour and it's just quicker but sometimes I use the regular one you can totally skip this part if you want to just buy them already made they sell them at your local grocery Mexican stores but here I am making them I'm adding the flour now to that and then I'm going to add after my flour I'm going to add a tablespoon of oil you can use any oil of your choice and then after that I'm going to add a little bit of salt and then I'm going to start mixing my dough. This was the first time I've made bolillos. I'm really familiar with making dough for pizza dough like for breads and stuff. It's the shaping of the bread that gets tricky for me but I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I enjoy making bread. If you enjoy playing with play-doh you will enjoy making bread. It's just pretty fun and it smells amazing and it tastes really good so here I'm going to mix this you can definitely do this in your kitchen aid mixer or like a stand mixer any mixer that you have I prefer by hand even though it's a little bit more work it's just I feel the dough and see what it needs so I really prefer it that way I've done it on my stand mixer but I just prefer it this way so then right here, I noticed it's a little bit sticky, so I added more flour. You can definitely do that. Of course, the measurements will be in the description. So if you want to know how to make that, I'll put it in the description. And then I'm just adding about a one-fourth of a cup of flour each time because I just noticed it was just too sticky. If it's sticking like this to my hand, the dough, it definitely needs more. Once it's done, I like to add just a little bit of oil, any oil, but my cooking oil spray ran out. So I'm just going to use the regular oil and put it at the bottom because now that my dough was shaped and formed, I'm going to let it rise for about an hour. Um, just putting some oil on the pan, on the bottom of my mixing bowl. Put my dough, and this is going to double in size. I'm covering it with a kitchen cloth, and like I said, I'm going to let this for about an hour or so and I'm going to come back double in size beautiful going to punch the air out it's a fun way to do that take out my dough now this recipe makes six little rolls six bolillos six of them so I'm going to cut them into six dough now we're going to have to do a second rise I highly recommend for you if you are making this to let the double rise be on the baking tray that you are going to 
do them because I shaped them on this wax paper and that was a big mistake of mine because all my work into shaping the first batch when I tried taking them off the wax paper they were stuck and they kind of deflated so you'll see the first round didn't came out as nice they still tasted amazing and my kid says they don't care what they look like as long as they're edible and they taste good which I was very happy that they said that because I was like these are kind of looking a little different shape, but it, it, it worked. The second time, look at how pretty they came out the first time. The second time I did shape them again and let them um, rise on the baking dish and that helped. And then I'm just adding a little bit of melted butter on the top of the, of the bread. And then I'm going to score them. I usually score them just with a knife. I didn't. I, but I think I'm going to need like the little razors that people use when they're making breads because the knife doesn't go as through as much as I like it. This is the batch that I had to um, put on there that I was having a hard time. You saw how round and pretty they were before and look at how they came out like all funky looking. But it was fine. My kids ate them and they said it was okay. The second round came out a little bit better but I did have to wait like additional hour for it to rise so the kids didn't care because they were hungry and then I baked them at 450 degrees for about 13 to 15 minutes and then here to my pan I'm going to start cooking the meat I'm adding oil and I don't need to keep adding oil this is just for the first round because the meat releases its own fat so then I'm just cooking the carne asada definitely you can cook this outside and bring like the breads outside for like a nice little barbecue or a picnic that would be really fun and nice but since I'm cooking it indoors I just added a little bit of oil to my pan now carne asada I remember my husband told me the trick to cooking it inside because a lot of people don't like cooking it inside they say it doesn't taste the same um, is to flip it quick in about three minutes you flip it and it's already ready to go um, you don't want to cook this for too long because then it dries out. So just one flip and it's good to go. And then I put it to the side. And then after this, um, I start making some beans. You can add whatever you want to your tortas. Here I'm adding some bacon fat that I have. You can refry your beans with lard, bacon fat. You can use oil. You can use cooking spray. There's different ways to make it. You can skip the oil completely and just smash them up like that or buy them already made. Um, so what I do is I cook beans about once a week. I'll cook them in my slow cooker or in a pot and then I freeze them and whenever I need them, I have them. So that's what I did. I took out a gallon size worth of it. I add the chile de arbo to flavor the grease. And once it gets nice and toasted, I take it out, remove it. I add just the beans to it. I'm not trying to add any of the liquid because then that's just going to make more of the popping from the grease. So then I'm adding my beans to it. Once I've add all the beans, I'll add some of the juice of the, of the beans and then I'll start smashing them. And tortas, you can add beans to them. You can add, like I said, any toppings that you want. On this day, we did refry beans because I feel like anytime you have a torta you have to add like refry beans it tastes so good and then it's great for like leftovers or whatever you need them for but I just made what we need it for this day and then I'm just mashing them up it's really quick and easy this is the first round of bread that came out the tortas I think they look okay not too bad so finishing up cooking up the beans while the meat is cooking and then I was letting my other dough rise. I'm just cooking up the beans here to add to my tortas. And then we're also using a queso fresco. This is how one of my girls had it, just the meat and the cheese. This was another plate. They wanted the beans on the side. Another of my daughters, I didn't film it. This is the second dough. These were much better because I let them rise on the tray. Another one just had like carne asada. They had American cheese. They didn't want queso fresco and they added like a slice of turkey. If you ever want to make tortas and you don't have carne asada, you can use ham or turkey. I will even love eating it with just avocado and the queso fresco. Just like that, it's so good. 
So to the bread, I'm cutting it in half and then I'm going to add a little bit of mayo. You can do mayo on both sides, but I just wanted it on one side. And then to the other side, I'm adding my refried beans. You can do refried beans on both sides. Like if you make this at home, you can add what you want to add, your favorite toppings, whatever you have on hand too. You don't have to overcomplicate it. It's very simple and very easy and delicious. And then I'm adding my piece of carne asadas to my torta. And then I'm going to add avocado. And then I'm going to add some nice thin sliced onions. Well, the pieces that I added weren't thinly cut, but I tried cutting some and I think I already had added it to another torta, but it didn't matter. I love onions. And then I added half of an avocado sliced up. You can make guacamole too if you want to do it. But growing up, tortas, I have like a good memory of my mom. When she would go to TJ, she would always order this torta. And I always could smell the bread, the meat, the beans. I can always smell the jalapeños. And every time I eat a torta, I have that reminder. Um, so here I'm just adding the onions. And then I am going to add a few jalapenos to it. You can always add lettuce to this as well. Sometimes I'll do that. I know my mother-in-law adds mustard. So definitely you can add whatever toppings you want. Any sandwich toppings that you can think of. Some people just have them with beans and cheese and, it's, and some salsa and it's really good. So here I'm just adding the jalapenos. I added that queso fresco. That gives it really good flavor. You can also toast up the bread. A lot of people do that. This is what my torta looks like with all the toppings that I added. I'm gonna close that up. And this was dinner on this day. This was so good and we really enjoyed it on this day. It's really nice to enjoy a good meal. And that was dinner on this day. For dinner on this day, we're having chorizo bean tacos. These are tacos that my mother-in-law makes. My in-laws make them. They're so good. So we start off with some chorizo. I add a little bit of water and I'm cooking up the beef chorizo. My mother-in-law adds water to the chorizo because she says it helps with like the heartburn. So I just do the same. And then I'm using the fat of the chorizo once it's fully cooked to refry some beans. So the beans that I used the prior day, I'm using the other half of the beans too make tacos so I usually that's how I plan my dinners I usually try to make something that will have enough for the next day so I'm not going to the store constantly and buying things I try to make things work with the next day and I plan them weekly my dinners um, so here I'm just refining the beans with the chorizo once they're fully cooked I'm going to start um, by making a quick little salsa this salsa is like a pico de gallo. I'm adding a cucumber. I'm adding tomato. I'm going to add some cilantro. So starting off to the bowl, I'm adding the peel and diced cucumber. And then I'm going to dice up some tomatoes as well and add that to the bowl. And then I'm going to also add the chopped up cilantro. And then I'm also going to add a chopped diced uh, onion. and then if you want it spicy, this is the way my mother-in-law makes it. She adds a chile de arbol, but she toasts it up. So here I'm adding the diced onion. So here I used about half a tomato, the full cucumber, salt, and then you can add a chile if you want to make it a little bit spicy. The chile that I'm going to add is a chile de arbol. I'm just going to toast it up and then I'm going to cut it. Um, but I did take some out. Since I know some of my kids didn't want it spicy because the chile de arbol did make it a little bit spicy. My brother and I, our lips were burning for a bit, but it was a good burn. It was good. So mixing it up, going to take some to the side. This is the chile de arbol. I'm just letting it toast up a little bit and turn, until it turns a little bit darker. And then this is what it looks like all charred up. I'm going to cut it a little rough chop and then I'm going to add that to the salsa. I'm going to mix it up and add it and it gives it really good flavor but if you don't like it spicy don't add this this salsa my mother-in-law always makes these with these tacos usually these tacos we make them outside on the grill but sometimes we'll make them inside i do prefer them outside on the grill but they taste pretty good still inside not bad and 
after giving it a good mix, I'm going to set this to the side. And then I'm going to start warming up my tortillas just so that they can fold without breaking. You can do this in the microwave, but I just do it on the griddle. And then once they're nice and warm, I add a little bit of the bean and cheese, the bean and chorizo mixture to it. And then I'm going to add it back to my griddle. And then I'm just going to let them go so they get nice and toasty. Definitely you can get them as crunchy as you want. I don't make mine too crunchy because it hurts my teeth. So I don't eat them like that. But... I still make mine where they're crunchy, just not too hard. But for some of my girls, they wanted it really crunchy, so I made it for them. So just put them for as long as you want them. You don't need to add any oil or anything. When they cook them outside, they get nice and dark. It tastes really good, too. The charcoal gives it really good flavor. And it's just such a simple dinner. Usually we have like carne asada and like fruit and chips and all the others. That's what the dark ones look like, nice and toasty. And they'll look like that outside too when we're grilling them. But on this day, kept it simple, just had tacos. I didn't make any sides. And they were pretty good, pretty filling. This is what my plate looks like. I don't make mine too toasted, like I said. Just enough to give me that crunch, but not too toasted. And then I add the cucumber salsa to it. And then this is what my plate looks like. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's What's for Dinner. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.